Can you describe the development process at your previous project? But your introduction, tell me about yourself. My suggestion, it shouldn't be long. You can start with your last project or you can start with what kind of positions you're targeting and then work your way towards your last project and keep yeah. it high level. You, especially as a queue uh, engineer, it's that curiosity is like, what did you do? Additional recording was great, but additional troubleshooting steps. Follow through, what was the root cause? Like those things were definitely uh, missing. Today is market and, recession with... Ajil Mansour, he's a director of engineering and the tech company here in Los Angeles. And he also is a lead of our mock interviewing program. So today is a free public open mock interview, but how it will work, right? Tell me about yourself. We're going to ask, we start with the, this opening question. Tell me about yourself and what, what was your last project? And I will go with the follow-up questions based on your story. And after that, We'll make sure that we're going to give you honest feedback. What went well and what should be improved? And yeah, let's get started. We're going to start with the first person who sent me the, the resume. Candidate number one, can you tell us a little bit before you're going to start just your, your objective, right? What are you looking, what kind of position you are looking and maybe how long you've been on the job market? Just to a little bit know about your background. So I'm looking for a mid seniors or slash junior position. Been on the job market for the last about around six months. Around six months. Okay. Uh, about five months now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Candidate number one, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your last project? What have you done? So I've been working as a software developer for the last five years. I started out at Barclays as a junior developer and working on our for proprietary software, trading software, as well as, yes, and as well as maintaining and developing our other in-house applications. Forward on to that, I, I worked at United Health as a as a contractor for six months for a ID assignment projects for new buyers and over there and the contract ended in January 2023 and now we're and now I'm looking for a position as a software developer with with your company yeah yeah and yes just a little background with with Ravisher they contract me to Barclays and then Barclays hired me on so that's why I just consider Barclays as my Primarily first company. You've been there like since 2018, right? You started there. Yes. As a contractor. So, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The last project at, at United Health, we were working on an ID assignment project for new payers, not buyers. I misspoke last time. And we were working on a team of six developing applications using Java 8 beyond Spring Boot. The project involves you taking in the, inf the payers information and creating records in the database. And IDing all the records that's coming in from, from that, their side of, from that particular buyer's directions. After that more current project, I've been, for the last five months, I've been working on strengthening my Java, my, my Java skill, as well as my front end development skill and trying to contribute to some open source project. Okay. Thank you. All right. Awesome. And I'll definitely thank you for going first. I know it'd be a little nerve wracking, but better to do it here than right. actual job interview. Can you describe the development process at your previous project? What did that look like? How big was the, you mentioned there's, or at least your resume mentioned there was a team of six. Right. What did it look like? How often were you releasing and what did the development process look like? So my particular team is in a team of six. The entire overarching team is about, uh, I would say about a hundred, around a hundred people top down. Releasing is about every five weeks yes and our sprint is two weeks we catch up every we catch up on our scrum every morning for about 15 to 30 minutes every day and the every four weeks is a retro and every first day of the first four weeks of a new sprint is a is a yeah what is it called i forgot the name for that but basically we just go over the task that we're gonna go for the next sprint and decide who's gonna do what Okay. And what was your primary responsibility in all of that? My primary responsibility was a, a developer primarily. And for that, whenever there's a task that I feel proficient at taking, and I will go ahead and take that. Otherwise, if it's a little bit more, I will more than I can handle, I would let them know 
and then pick it up just so that there's an awareness. Okay. Let me ask you this question. It could be your last project or one before. Tell me about a, about a project that you're, you're particularly proud of and tell me how that project got assigned to you, whether that's a feature or really it could be anything, but just tell me a time that you're really proud of working with the team. You got something done that, that made you happy. Like every time you get a feature done, it is a happy time. Yeah. But if you're asking for a memorable, memorable occasion, mm -hmm. it was back when I was working with Barclays right around 2021, I think was the time that the assignment was, was made available to me. I was tasked with creating a, one of the steps within our application system to, 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 sorry, I just got back from work and <laughs> my brain's a little jumbled to, for the trading project. And it involves, what is it? Yeah. It involves. Oh yeah, it's about trade. Sorry, I can't think of the word right now. Trade validation logic for one of our for our trading trading platform. And for that particular project, what I had to learn was why I was proud of it was because it was one of it was larger than normal project, and I had to do a lot of digging with components that I was not too familiar with. Previously at the company, I had been exposed to the system, and I've been just looking at all the all the what the previous developer has done and all that. And for this particular has I had to come up with something of my own with technologies that are familiar enough, but at the same time trying to in integrate that into the uh, into a working environment so that it fits with the uh, with the company's code and uh, yeah, and that also involved me learning a lot more of the technologies I wasn't too familiar with, specifically drools and how that plays into the development process and. Secondly, the the business logics that's involved with with this particular product. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge with that particular project? I think it was learning about the business process. And uh, that was just something that's very not that I'm not too familiar with. I had to reach out to a lot of my seniors developers and they pointed me to my manager. And from there he pointed me to to first go learn at our to learn it from our, our portals, which I got some information and to reach out to another senior dev on another team that previously working on a similar model, a similar modules, and yeah. pick his brain and you start going from there to other seniors and figure out, to figure out what's going on. I think at one point we did go to, to one of the traders for help, but I think it was a little busy. So that yeah. got canceled. Yeah. Yeah. So how was the project? Received mentioned some of your challenges, some of why it was memorable for you, but tell me a little bit about, were you able to get it launched in time? How was it received? Yeah. So it was received, I think, positively. It was more or less a modules that's not as time consuming, not, not as time consuming, but has some business. Let, let me go back a step here. It is a, a year long project that was developed and tested rigorously. So on on the day of the deployment, I think it went smoothly. The QA took did come back with a couple of feedback within that time frame to uh, with box and with a suggestion to make the product a little better. Awesome, cool. I'm gonna just wrap it up with one more question here. I like. I was just reading your resume. You mentioned you are you have experience with uh, Liquibase. Can you tell me about describe for me? what Liquibase is and how do you work with Liquibase in Java? So Liquibase, I was working with that. I didn't quite have time to look into the overall details, but Liquibase, from my understanding and from what I've seen, is a, it's, 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 a, it's a list of changes that, was, that is made to the database and you have a change list and then as well as you have the, the, the list of the change. So there's a, like a master list of things that's changed. Those I think are kept for records and then the actual script that is ran. And from my observation, at least is that Java take in that, that, that script and then run it against the database. And if it in its own, in its own session or transaction and roll back if necessary. So it's, it's like an automat automated database deployment tool. Nice. So what is your, tell me about your involvement with Liquibase in your last project. How did you yeah. use it? A lot of it is to deploy to our, to our, our database servers. And yeah, a lot of that is creating correct updates or creating the, mostly creating the correct updates 
to the database and submit it with the with the reviews of like I said with the reviews of senior devs yeah other senior devs okay so you ran liquid base commands in dev you made changes you checked them in who ran them in like other environments if you had other environments or production how would that work would somebody manually you would you provide them commands to run or there was an automated pipeline for database schema changes I think I do believe there's an automated pipeline I'm not too sure I did remember making a mis mistake and that caused quite a lot of not quite a lot of issue it was caught right at right when releasing right release yeah so one of the database admin called me up and had me just figure out what was going on and it turned out it was just a yeah a spelling mistake it was I thought it as a liquid base instead of liquid base ah yes you know from yeah. what I'm taking from liquid base is that there should be there there is a pipeline to run that otherwise yeah what would there be a automated tool for that right yeah all right. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. I think we can move to feedback. Ready? Please. All right. Number one, I think your your resume and your experience really pops out. Like you've done a few different things. You have some really interesting tools there. So I love those things. Obviously, seeing that it's whether we like it or not, there's a bias for if you have a computer science degree and a background, you have that as well. So those are things that are working in your favor for sure. Feedback for you, again, I wasn't, what you're trying to convey to people when you're interviewing, you, when you're interviewing, right? You want to convey you're a good fit for that role. You can come in as a developer, you can come in and contribute to the team right away, right? And that's what different parts of the interview cover, whether they're behavioral questions or technical questions. I think this is a good first step, but you need some work there. Your, and you mentioned it's, you already had an exhausting day, but your introduction, tell me about yourself. You want that to be like just a muscle memory. And for you, it didn't, that didn't come through. If it was an actual interview, I would have probably need to probe a little bit more to find out about you, ask you some more questions. My suggestion, it shouldn't be long. You can start with your last project, or you can start with what kind of positions you're targeting and then work your way towards your last project and keep it high level at times, but that's something I would work on for sure. So practice in the mirror, record, do what it, what you need to do to get that really tight. So you're saying work backward instead of forward. Yeah. Okay. Typically that would be my advice. And there's two reasons for that. One is what you did more recently is going to be more, more interesting. It should also be more fresh. The other part of it is depending on how much time the interviewer has allowed it for that, they may need to cut you off. It goes long, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a half an hour interview, they have 10 questions. There's only 30 or 60 seconds for an introduction. Okay. That's, that's my, re that's what I would suggest. Understood. Yeah. I yeah, definitely agree with that deal. I mean, first of all, kudos to you. Like you are going out of your comfort zone. This is for sure for me, clear indicator that you will, you will get a job. Yeah. You will get a job. The only thing that I did already mention that you need to prep your introduction that leads you to your strengths. And for me, it was pretty hard to understand from your from your pitch, what did you do? Not just general, but particular, what was your role? What your contribution was in the project? And you mentioned two things, like before you mentioned that the last project wasn't your strongest one. And it's honestly... First question pops up, like, why? You've been there, like, for six months, or so, right? From May to January. So you wasn't there, like, for two months, right? If you would be there for two months, I would understand. But you've been there for quite a while. So you at least should have clear understanding of architecture or of your project and of the tools that you was using, technologies at least, right? On a high level even. But it took you... And again... I understand if I would be in your shoes, I would probably also be, would be mumbling as well, because it's a nerve wracking process we are doing right now. And I clearly understanding this. Sometimes when I was going through interviews, people were, would ask me very simple questions. I would, you know, and I would be stuck because of the nervousness, right? So I understand this and like hundred percent practice like you should be all these bullets that you listed in your resume should going out of your mouth like automatically or like in the conversation with your friend like hey 
tell me what you did in your last project and you just take off and yeah, I did one, two, three. And I would be more engaging to find out more. So your, I would say your purpose of this, tell me about yourself, knowing really good your boots, knowing really good your tools that you were using. So hiring managers, like a deal would be a, love to go deeper and asking you oh so exciting tell me about how did you and like liquid base right he was trying to push you up in in, in this direction but again it was pretty hard to figure out how deep you were there so again yeah. practicing I, I would also and it was whether it was your answer to liquid base or the sort of the behavioral question i had asked you i would highly recommend looking into the star method that allows you to really keep your answer con concise, but still rich with the sort of details that the interviewer is looking for. So that can help your answers be better received, more concise. It's also a good way to form the answer in your head. It's a little, it was a little bit, especially your answer to behavioral question was a little bit, it was hard to follow. Because basically it's hard to follow. Help out the interviewer, basically treat that as a cheat sheet, describe the situation, the task, the action you took, and the result that you that you got at the end of it. Those would be my 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 big two things for you. I think overall, just developing those those mental models, those tools to help you answer different different questions in the interview. It will help you to keep the questions much more, keep your answers much more relevant and have a much better impact. Because obviously, and this is for everybody, this is for you and everybody, by the time you get to the interview, They've already seen your resume. There's already, what's the right word? There, there's all already match, right? They're already thinking there's a match, right? Help them out through your interview. Help them out, highlight those things, highlight, highlight the, the areas that the interviewer is taking you to. Okay. Yeah. And a good note, your, I like your resume, like how it was structured, very pretty simple, very clean and easy to understand. Yeah. Did you, did you write that resume yourself or did uh, you get help? That there was definitely a lot of help on revision over the year. But I don't want to say this, but I, I definitely did ask Chess GPT for a little bit of a structure. And interesting. Yeah. And nothing you know, wrong about it. Nothing. Yeah. About it. It's, it's easy. It's easy to follow. It's easy. You have your highlights there. Just work on. I know it was a long day today, but when you go to your next interview, get pump yourself up, get excited about it, and deli deliver that. Show them the impact you've had at your, in your previous projects and how that will translate to, to, to that next opportunity you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Thank was it you. helpful? Was it helpful for you, Kennedy, number one? Was it helpful? Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely helpful. Just hearing the feedback and knowing ex exactly where I'm weak at is and where to work on is definitely right. beneficial for my... Yeah. I always tell people interviewing is a skill. You should see me when I have an interviewed... Even when I am interviewing people, when I haven't interviewed in a while, recently we had a chance to do that with another director and we were saying to each other, man, we're rusty. So it cuts <laughs> both ways, but it's a skill. It, it requires practice. Understood. All right, let's move forward. Before we start with the second candidate, and actually let me tell you about our program that we are going through. I welcome you to join our mock interview private sessions that we're going to launch. It's going to be four week of rushing interviews, very similar to what we do today, but it's going to be more intense three times a week. We're going to have four sessions with the uh, hiring engineering managers, including Adil. Adil is a lead of this program and he will be walking through. And we're going to have eight additional group interview sessions with engineers from tech companies, from Apple, from Salesforce, from Google. We have great engineer who solved over a thousand lead code problems that you'll be guys be doing also during our program. But yeah, this is our engineers and you're going to be practicing in the small groups, like very similar today, we have eight people. Our group will be limiting, small groups will be limiting up to seven groups, up to seven people. And yeah. You will be going through one by one and you will be also receiving the feedback and you, you will also be giving feedback to your peers. Yeah. So our team, Guru Devanla, he is engineering, former engineering manager at Google. Now he is running the development team at the blockchain startup. This is the guy who solved over a thousand Bitcoin problems. He's a former also engineer at Google. 
He used to work at Amazon. Alexei Lee, he's a senior software engineer at Salesforce. And Nick, he is a development engineer in test at formerly at Apple. And now he's working at Hogarth Worldwide. This is, yeah. If you guys want to learn about more about this program, I will post a link to contact me and we're going to talk about this program, like what it is. But all of you are welcome to join to this program. Also, another thing, let me ask you guys, have you all went through the game or at least did you start the game interview discovery? Post it in the chat. Yeah. So this is something that will help out already, like maybe 70% you can address the most common mistakes in terms of job search and building the resume. If you go to the crushing interview, let me share my screen real quick. I'll show you, walk you through again. Give me one second. So this is something that you definitely need. And this is totally free. This is, you can do it today. Show you. Yeah, the very first thing, game interview discovery. I compiled almost common mistakes and the checklist, how to build up your resume, job hunting, how to apply and networking. Right, because we all know that cold applying is the least strong, the least strong way of getting the interviews. And if you go through all these levels, you have assignments there. You have assignments there. You have to build up your resume. You have to update your resume. Then you go to the final stage. It's going to be a private mock interview, very similar to that. But it, it, this mock interview we're not going to publish on YouTube. This mock interview will be just doing in the private group. So. This is something that you can take advantage of for free. You have to just apply everything that all us finish all assignments and apply everything that you posted here. So I hope you can find it here and I'll post the link as well. Anyway, let's move forward with the candidate number two. Candidate number two, are you here? Hi. Yeah, that's me. Hey, before we're going to start, can you give us a little bit about what kind of positions you are looking and how long you've been on the job market? Sure. I'm looking for the for positions as a software tester, QA engineer, hopefully a good combination between manual testing and automation testing. I've been on the job market for two months now. Two months now. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's get started then. Candidate number two. Why don't you tell us about yourself and about your last project? Absolutely. Yeah. I've been a software QA engineer for the past five years. Yeah. Started off at company number one. Sorry. I had company number one, more on the manual side. And then I eventually moved up to become more of a automation tester. At my last company, I was working on one of the biggest features of the company, which was their calling and messaging feature. I was responsible for testing this manually on three different platforms, web, iOS, and Android. I was also responsible. Yeah, that was the main project for that company. It took us a lot of long hours to ship the, uh, finally deploy our feature, which we needed to, uh, to verify that the new backend was stable, was that the new backend did not negatively affect the existing behavior for the feature and that the new UI that we gave the feature did not was also present, but did not negatively affect the feature. And yeah, we were able to stress test test it, and we did find a couple of anomalies and one crash. But we learned and improved upon those mistakes, and luckily we were able to deploy it in about three months, which was when how long I had to learn the feature, test it, and write documentation on it. You want to take over? Yes. Awesome. Let's see here. First, first question that pops up in my mind is love that you were working on these calling and messaging features across web, iOS, and Android. Can you tell us about a little bit about the, about the platform? You mm -hmm. had a backend, you had these front ends, and what was your responsibility in, in testing the backend and these three front end experiences? Overall, my responsibility was to ensure that the behavior of the feature was intact. So that was the premise of my testing. It was, and so for backend, I just had to make sure that calls were being sent to the correct user and that timestamps were correct, that the messages were correct, that we, it was able to do what 
a messaging platform and a calling platform, a modern day calling platform was able to do. So just imagine, for example, we were supposed to be able to do what WhatsApp does from sending messages to reacting with emojis to calling someone or and ending a call. So that it was more behavior driven testing in that, that I was responsible for. And also in addition to that, I was also responsible for testing compatibility across different platforms. We did not want we we did not want differences between one platform and the other. They had to work the same if possible. Because I know there, there are some differences between Android and iOS operating systems that we can't have it all the same, but we try to get everything looking the same. Hopefully that answers it. Okay. And when you say iOS and Android, you you mean a native mobile app? A native mobile app. Got it. Awesome. So this was this a remote or in, and I'll tell you why I asked that. Was sure. this a remote position or were you in the office a few days a week? Yeah, it was a fully remote position. Yeah. So how did you test? Did you have all these test devices to, how did you, how did you do all this cross platform testing? Yeah, I, I had all these test devices, obviously with web, I have my laptop, which I can't do my work without my laptop. And so we also had a desktop app. Or on the Apple, Apple on the App Store that we also tested sometimes, but it was basically our in-browser web app. iOS, I use my personal phone, which is I like to highlight that because it's resourceful. I th- I think. And Android, I used a company provided a phone for me so that I could test on Android. Okay, so you have you had physical devices you could use for testing, correct, including your laptop. Great. Yeah. How were you deploying the app? to those devices. How did that work? How did you get a test version of the Android app or the iOS, or for that matter, the desktop app? Yeah. So we used, I believe it's called Android SDK, where we had a test build for the development and staging environment for our Android application. We used the Play Store version, which was our production environment that we get a test against. And uh, I, uh, on iOS, there was a build that we were given where we were able to use the same application and just switch between develop between environments, which included development, staging, and production as well. Yeah, so we ma- manually tested on the app just by clicking through our, through, throughout the application on our mobile device. Okay, and you were focused on regression testing, is that correct? Regression testing, yes. And also I did a lot of ad hoc testing and acceptance, user acceptance testing. Got it. And what was the release cycle? Like how often, how big, how long were these regression and UAT cycles for you? Yeah, for regular, like non-team specific updates, we were on a two-week cycle using the agile software development cycle model. And we were releasing in chunks of two weeks where we would take maybe about two to three days to ensure that the ticket specifications were present and behaving as expected. And then we would take the next two or three three days to regression test. So that'll put us in about a week for mobile. But for web, it was a little bit different. We took one week for acceptance testing because sometimes we had to send something back and it Took some time for us to get the solution back and then also took time to to test. So we took like about a week for user acceptance testing. And then the next week we would regression test. That took us about four days. So that would put us on a release day on Thursday. We did not like to release on Friday. So we try to keep it to release days on Thursday. Yeah. So I would say one week for mobile. That's a good idea always. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. (laughs) One week for mobile and two weeks for, for web releases. Okay. Tell me about a time where you found a bug on the on a native mobile app. Could be iOS or Android Android. Mm-hmm. Tell me about tell me about the bug. Tell me about the feature you were testing. Tell me about how you found the bug, how you reported it, and and what happened afterwards. Sure. There was this it was honestly, I think, one of the weirdest bugs I ever found. I would click, I believe it it, it happened in the configure in the configuration section of the application on iOS. And we would, I would, I randomly found it. I changed my email and I saved it. And then all of a sudden the app crashed. And so I, I, ha- I had to make sure that this was reproducible on my end. So that way it's not just 
some weird glitch anomaly. So I found out that it was reproducible on my end, but it was not reproducible, I think, for several of my acute teammates, but for others, it was reproducible. So it was an intermittent bug that was happening for some users and not for other users. So with that bug, I found, I, I feel like I try to find out more about the nature of the bug and how widespread it could be and definitely reported where it was found and how I found what my reproduction steps were to find the bug. But luckily I was also able to capture it on video because sometimes it would, yeah, sometimes with bugs, I'm not able to capture it on video, but this bug, I was able to capture it on video. And so I created a linear ticket for it where I put down where I found it, what was my testing environment, where I found it, was it reproducible in production, which it wasn't because I always have to make sure if it's reproducible in production to verify if it's a regression or not. What my reproduction steps were, I pasted the video on the ticket, I pasted what the actual result is and what the expected result should be on the ticket. And I, since it was a very weird bug, I told my manager about it. So that way everyone on the QA team knows that, hey, there's this bug, it's been reported already. And I was able to tell the, inform the product manager who I think was, because there, there are several product managers and their the teams are broken up by features. The product manager who I think might be most familiar or appropriate because they were assigned to the feature that was closest to the bug that I found, I informed them about the bug so that way they can inform whoever the software engineer who was going to be assigned to the issue. And so that was my process for, uh, for reporting and yeah, reporting and compiling the information on the bug that I found, which luckily it was solved and it was, yeah, it was, yeah. it was solved luckily. Yeah, what was the, crash. what was the root cause of that defect? How was it inter introduced? Root analysis. I never did find out. And yeah, that, that is a good question. But I just know that it was solved. But yeah, it has me thinking now, for sure. Yeah, that is fair. All right. We can uh, roll into feedback. Yeah, okay. let's do this. So a lot of, I, I'll get this out of the way and then I'll get to some of the good parts. But you have a typo in your dates and it's been driving me crazy the whole time. But I've been just trying to <laughs> wait for feedback time. June, tw or maybe I'm misreading it. June 2022 to April 2022. Did you mean April 2023? That's terrible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. I've, I think I've mentioned this again before. I had a typo in my resume a while back. It's not unheard of, especially as a QA engineer, you want to double, triple check, triple check it. Yeah. And people won't, they won't necessarily hold it against you, but it, it does, re, you know, it could reduce your chances of getting a call back if, if the hiring manager or recruiter was 50, 50, right? So you want to just keep that in mind. The other one was respons responsible for diagnosing test flakes and failures in automated test run. I'm not sure. I think flaky test is the term, but if I'm wrong about that, test flakes is if that's acceptable. I just learned something new, but just wanted to highlight those things. I'll change it to test. You, you said flaky tests. Yeah. So the other thing on your resume I would look at is you're taking a lot of real estate on ran automated test, ran API test, it was very passive kind of activity. So you may want to look at that. The other thing that, that, and this is important here, it caught my eye because when you were a mentor and tutor, you have data about that position, right? The impact you've mm -hmm. had passing race for 45% went from 20% to 70%. Fantastic. Yeah. Why don't you have information like this about your last two positions, which are the more relevant positions, right? Yeah. No, yeah, the, that is that that is something I definitely yeah. do. Need and the reason I highlight is, especially for you, because it's obvious, but everybody should try to put in that impact, right? There is created tests or made regression better or whatever the case may be, quant quantify that. That will, that will convey the impact you've had more than just you made it better. Definitely. So I would look at that. I found it very interesting about how you joined your previous company and you were focused a lot on functional testing and regression and all of that, and then worked your way towards automation. That was really good. So I, overall, I think the, the introduction was, was well done. That was an interesting pointer where you would expect a hiring manager to, to ask more about, be more curious about it, not having, but then it detracts when you just write, just ran tests, mm -hmm. then 
it was good that you provided me that context, but reading it a little bit, a little bit confusing. The other one I will say, or the last piece of feedback I have for you is on the behavioral question that I asked you, they're really, you picked an interesting bug. Yes, but it didn't, the spirit of the question was really looking to highlight your things that you did well was like how you documented and how you, how you coordinate reporting that bug. But it left, especially as a Q engineer, it's that curiosity is like, what did you do? Additional recording was great, but additional troubleshooting steps, follow through. What was the root cause? Those things were definitely missing. And from this ex particular example, right? So pick an example that shows your highlights, your, the parts that you did do well, right? Is the mm -hmm. communication and reporting of the defect, but also the other parts, your technical troubleshooting diving deeper and that overall curiosity, figuring out like, oh, it was, I did these things to, to narrow it down that it's definitely a front end bug, not a back end bug. That's interesting. Then you could follow through on, it turned out it was a, I don't, I don't know, like an iOS cache issue and it was a really tricky and this is how it meant. Like all of those things would, could take this answer from a too fantastic. So you miss every time you have a behavioral question and you don't get an impact, a really good impact, like re really overall good answer, you miss an opportunity to impress. So that's what I would call your, that answer was the, and the other tip is around that. And I don't know if you do this or not, but you should, or let me ask you, do you write down, do you have notes when you go into interviews? I usually do. Fantastic. Yeah. So have some of the, the impactful things you've done in your notes. So you're not trying to put that answer in your, you're not trying to go back in your memory and find a particular instance where you find a tricky bug, right? Or, mm -hmm. and usually those high impact examples that you'll put in your notes, you can usually find that they're relevant for not just one type of answer, multiple types of answers. So I would, if this is one of, if this is one of those, I would look to maybe swap it out for something else where you have more information into end about it. And you had more, you can highlight your impact more or tell us like, oh, that bug had it gone out to production would have caused, would have been really bad for the user experience. So hopefully that's helpful. That's definitely helpful. Thank you so much for that. And I have a, an example that I could think of right now that I will definitely write down. Thank you. Yeah. Write it down to your brag sheet, take your brag sheet to every single interview. Yeah. What you can do as well in terms of up, updating your resume and guys who recently joined Go to our game, Interview Discovery. There is a checklist. Check your resume against this checklist. Okay, what needs to be updated? Second, post your resume in the section peer review and give a feedback to other peers, like the resume. Because second view will always, you know this, like when you're looking into your resume, when you have, you are biased to your, your resume, right? And you want to second look from, different perspective. So you will be giving the feedback for other people about the resume and at the same time you will be receiving. So do this, you will, maybe you can do this multiple iteration, but it will definitely help you out to improve your resume. In terms of answers, especially like with a bug, I think you definitely need to make it shorter because Make it shorter, but valuable and make a deal ask you follow-up questions. Oh, really? That's interesting. Tell me how you did debugging of this bug, right? Did you? So make him make a deal or hiring managers asking you follow-up questions, but try to make it a little bit shorter because what happened, you give a lot of information, but the most interesting part that a deal was looking, you didn't answer that. And you want to address this if you're not sure about this earlier, rather than you don't have time for that. And the same thing, like what we mentioned to candidate number one, you have to know very clearly, like what you did at your project, right? What kind of, what tests? I have a lot of questions though, in terms of your processes, and I'm not going to dive right now, but I would definitely would ask, oh, why you do this rather than that? And you need to explain why right because yeah. it's it it can sound weird but at the same time it can be actually awesome process that i don't know and you need to explain this mm -hmm. too so be ready yeah clearly explain like what your contribution was in this project what you did and practicing 
Same thing, going with the mock interviews, guys. Please free, j join us this Saturday, 24th. We're going to start this our mock interviewing process for QA and software engineers for both. Yeah, I think, Adil, do you need to drop off? 6.30. Yes. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for participating. I'll see you later. And also, guys, if you want to do this, the, another mock interview, we're going to do this on Wednesday, 6.30. 6.30, right? Or 7.00. Yeah, 6 30. 6 30. But you need to participate in this. You need to pass through the, the game to the level five. If you're not if you're not sure about this, go to crushing interview, the very first tab. It calls game interview discovery. You will get tons of valuable information. Do it. All right, let's move forward to, with the next candidate. Thank you, Adil. And I'm gonna take it off from here. Yeah, this game, game interview discovery, guys. It's very short recordings, like, but very valuable. All righty, candidate number three, are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, candidate number three, why don't you tell us about yourself and about your last project? Okay, my name is Alex. I am a QA automation engineer, but my, my experience is pretty broad. So currently my personal project I'm working on Python using pandas for data analysis on equities. So a lot of number crunching there, but I am a QA automation engineer by heart. I've been looking for about a month. So that's where I'm at in the job process. Oh, you've been there for a month, you said? I've been looking for a month. Oh, you've been looking for a month. Okay. Can you a little bit walk me through about this company? What kind of project was that? You said data analysis, was it your your responsibility or was it like the company's product? So the thing that I'm currently working on is my own personal one, but I'll talk about my professional project. The last project that I worked on professionally was building a QA automation framework from scratch mm -hmm. at a company that had no QA automation process. So there, they didn't have anything. Basically, I was building something from scratch. I had to invest time in figuring out what the tools were, what kind of process we were going to pick up, and then basically being hands-on and implementing everything, building the tools, hooking it up with CI, CD, generating it, alerts. Uh, can you clarify, was it your personal project, you said, or was it the project at your last company? The one I'm talking about now is the one at my last company. At your last company. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you build up the testimation framework from the scratch you mentioned, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the time they were used, they're still using Azure DevOps and I had no experience with that. So I had to figure out how that was going to work with Microsoft Teams, how it was going to work with Python and Selenium. I had no experience with Azure before coming in. So I built it up from the ground up and hooked it up and as far as I know, it's still running at their company. Okay. Yeah. Azure is Microsoft, so it should be pretty well integrated. Yeah. Tell me like about, okay, since you are talking about automation and you've been building up this from the ground, can you walk me through, through what was the decision making like when you were picking the test automation tools and why you choose this way? I could start with something easy, like picking the language that the automation should be written in. So the developers, they were previously on .NET and they were in the process of moving to Python. So that was a pretty easy decision. Pick Python, that's what everybody is writing their code in. Yep. I could have done it in JavaScript because they're also using React, but um, I think Python would have been, it's a better, more robust language than JavaScript. So that was part of the decision-making process. I think everybody was on board with it. They didn't really raise any questions on why I picked Python yeah. or suggested Python. So they were everybody was on board. Yeah, awesome. And the, the can you walk me through your tech stack? Do you use just Selenium driver or something other testing frameworks? So there was a previous attempt to do automation, and they started from Selenium Web Driver, just the raw driver and writing scripts in a flat file. So that's why I say I was starting from scratch because that really isn't a real solution. So I looked at some wrappers in Python. There's something called Selenium Base, which is being used at MIT. It does a lot of the stuff that you need to do. So I picked that up 
it comes with page object, it comes with all the fluent weights, and it comes with a lot of reporting out of the box, it integrates with Sauce Labs. It provides a lot of things. So we went with that wrapper. And then as far as full stack goes, we used a little bit of Postman for API testing. And there was talk of using Talend for backend and some OWASP tool for security testing. So that should cover most of the stack. The unit tests, I did not really cover. That was more of a developer thing. Everything in PyTest in, in their repository. But uh, front end, it was PyTest, Selenium based with Selenium. Integration testing, API testing, use Postman. And we were working on getting something from Swagger code gen so we wouldn't have to write too much there. But that work, that was interrupted. So it was, it's a, the stack is pretty broad. Yeah. And were you alone who was writing the testimation and who was consuming, who was user for your testimation? And maybe can you walk me through like your development process as well? Okay. I was pretty much like the lead on, on the QA team for automation. Everyone else was analyst. There was the manager. So I was the automation go-to. As far as trying to get the process to run, after building it up and integrating it with the tools, that was the bigger challenge. There was no process for automation. I built the solution and then what? We had to have some conversations, some hard conversations, basically. How is automation going to like work with development process? Are we going to run these on a per commit basis? Are we going to run them on a time basis? Are we going to figure out some other scheduling for, for automation processes? We tried, we tried timing every day, IPM, we would run the tests and we would find some bugs there. And then we moved into a per commit per release style of CI CD where a developer would push some something into development, it would run their unit tests, and then it would push it to another environment and run the QA automated tests. And then it would send an alert to a Slack or a, a Teams channel. And it would tell people that, oh, some tests failed. So there were challenges with that as well. Basically in the, the oh, sorry, good. I said that I bet you had some challenges there. Tell me more. Yeah, so going from no automation to a process like that, you have to consider the cultural impacts on the team and the process impacts it's okay. We have automated testing and they're catching bugs, but then it became a process where developers would say, yeah, we're not going to fix this bug that your automated test found because it's a uh, low priority. And then it became a process where the test would fail over and over again. There would always be red. We would get like 10 to 15 bugs and they wouldn't want to fix these things. So that was actually something that became a deal breaker. So automation actually did not work out there. Yep. I feel you. So what do you think, what could be improved in this process? Personally, from the offer that I received from this particular company, I should have just went in a different direction entirely, but like what, like I should have just kept going in my job search. I okay. think you shouldn't take this offer, you said, right? Basically, yes. They're currently experiencing some trouble right now, but I won't go into that. But that was one thing. If I were to like actually try and make this work, I would, I would probably have to try and access the highest level stakeholders, maybe even the CTO at the company to let them know this is what automation is. This is how it's going to affect your entire company. I don't know if I was ready to like go like above and go that direction, changing the culture of the company would have been a huge task, but testing culture, I'm not, I'm still not sure how, if I were to go into a company without any sort of automated processes, without any sort of QA procedures, how I would change that from the ground up. Your title were there senior QA engineer, right? Or QA lead. Yes. Anyway, actually, it doesn't really matter like the title, the title. And okay, let me let me go with the feedback, and then we can actually discuss this thing. Because what are you experiencing right now? I think it's fifty percent of all test automation engineers who would come to the new, to their company where 
they don't have the culture of automation tests or like where you have to actually, where you have to educate them. And not, it's not about it estimation, actually. It's about the software testing processes, right? In general. Or software development. Because, again, like this is something that that it should have been addressed on an early stage. But in terms of like your... I can hear from your experience, from your answers, like that you have a solid experience and you've been doing back and forth with a estimation, not even looking into your resume, but I'm looking into your resume and I see, yeah, you have actually a web developer background back then, in the, back then, 2011, and you moved to engineer, QA engineering position. Anyway, in terms of your resume, for sure, you need to, maybe you've been just copy pasting this from, and this is formatting. It's a little bit, Harder to read. Make it bullet. I don't know. Maybe it it was converted this way. I like your very short, concise summary. It's, it says a lot. Nine, nine years of experience. It's, you know what you're talking about and to whom. Yeah. And three pages, dude. It's a lot. I even make it make it not more than two. And these experience, your I would say your last five years of experience is the related experience, right? Because do you really remember what you did more than five years ago? Would you be able to start doing this right now? We have short memory. So I would suggest you make it shorter, make it concise, and keep what is the most relevant. But yeah, I you have pretty solid resume. Anyway, up to you. In terms of your answer, like especially the last one, if you're going to be talking to the, try to convert your conversation about your negative experience that you had to educate the whole entire company. And I know this is the case happen in many companies, but instead of that, and in a way like, oh, I should have go to different directions. I, I shouldn't take this offer. You already took it, right? So if you're going to talk to your future employers, it will not help you, right? So instead, talk in the positive way. Oh, yeah, I build up the, the estimation process there. Like I build up the testing testing processes in their development. And now you are ready to move on. Like something like that. Don't try to highlight, oh, actually I had to, I had to change the direction and I had to educate the whole entire company, but I didn't. That this is how it sounds. Does it make sense? Yeah, keep it positive. I'm just being I tend to be I know yes, what you're talking about. I, I know, I know. I know that you're trying to be transparent and I've been in your situation as well. But in this case, you sound like on the passive side. Like you came there as a automation engineer and you didn't educate them. You didn't address them in the first place, the value of the test automation or the value of your job or the value of, you didn't negotiate with them. You didn't set the right expectations. And usually this is what you would, employers or like companies would be expecting from you. They are looking for a person who would be go-to uh, person or go-to engineer, right? And this engineer would not sit there until the end and then, oh, actually it's supposed to work the other way. And then why you didn't address it on the first place, right? So this is the negative questions that can come up. But I understand that you have, you may have the valid answers, but you don't want to put yourself in this perspective. Does it make sense? Yeah. I mean, there is more questions pops up rather than answers. And again, I know that you're an experienced guy. I know you, you had deal with a lot of politics. And I think you have to deal with a lot of politi politics more than educating and, and something like that. I assume so. But again, you're a professional. You came there. You have to sh tell them what they should expect. You have to like, a, this is it's not in the job description, but it's something like what expecting from a senior guy who came up there. And again. A lot of, I understand this, it happens, but again, you better to highlight the same situation, but from the positive side. Make sense? Yeah, definitely. Just keep things positive. I know it's a bad habit on my side, but yeah, things yeah. are what they are. In other way, it sounds like 
again, like this is, if we would be two friends, like drinking beer and I would say, dude, you should have taken a step forward and tell them and you should have addressed them. Dude, this is what you should expect. Take the full responsibilities. And I may be not, I may be not right, but it doesn't sound like that. You may, you actually may be were trying to get the responsibilities and you were trying to change their direction. You're trying to change their processes, but it didn't work out, but you didn't explain in this way. So what I, what in here that you took the responsibility, you did everything that you could. You took the full responsibility that what didn't work, what was working, and then it's, it will be sounds different. All right, guys, I think we should be good for to go for today. It was pretty intense. Three mock interviews. Was it helpful, guys, for you? Send me some messages. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So, guys, again, join our mock interview program on the on this Saturday. If you want to, just schedule a call with me. I just post it here in the chat. I'll post it one more time. Otherwise, just here also. Go through the game that I just mentioned earlier. Follow the apply all four uh, four levels, and on the level five, you can get the free mock interview again. Like uh, it's gonna it's gonna be off the record. We're not gonna record this. We're not gonna post this on YouTube. It's gonna be a private mock interview, very similar to what we're gonna do on on our mock interview. And I will turn off the cam the recording.